Hey there, friends. You're watching the video version of Carpo's podcast, which means you're a patron, which means I appreciate you more than you could possibly know. And I just wanted my patrons to know that you can find extra content on my Patreon page. I'm still trying to figure out how to navigate it myself after all this time. But I do have some blogs on there, and one of my patrons asked if I could send them some of the literature that I had about uh, the paper I'm writing about opioids and whatnot, and I'd be more than happy to if you email me. I'm a little bit unorganized as a human being, but anyhow, I'm going to get into that. I'm going to start the audio recording, and uh, this podcast is going to get underway. Is South Park the greatest television show of all time? <laughs> There's a question that might seem simple to answer for many. A resounding no would come from a lot of folks. However, I'd like to visit this with an open mind, and I'd like you to realize, first off, that this video isn't necessarily just about South Park, but rather about the issues that it has covered after all of these years. Next year will be the 25th season that is 25 years, a quarter of a century this show has ran. And unlike a lot of other cartoons that, or television shows that may deal with certain topics that are controversial, this one dealt with the ones that nobody wanted to talk about. Before I get started, I'd like to give my usual welcome to people here and uh, read my little, my little disclaimer here. Now, Welcome to 15-Minute Free Thinking. My name is Carpo, and my podcasts are intended to serve as a learning tool for myself and others, as well as a bridge for communication between a society I see as having more potential than we're allowing ourselves to use. We are all just people, living as best we can, and I feel good dialogue can really help us lead better lives. If you're interested in joining the discussion, visit me on YouTube, Discord, or Patreon, of which I'll have more information at the end. I appreciate you taking the time to listen, and I hope you enjoy the show. As a disclaimer, many of these ideas are merely my own opinions, or just a discussion about a topic in general. Any mention of substance use or my own experiences should not be taken as advice. What works for me may not work for you. We are each unique. I'm just here learning like the rest of you and want to share my experiences. I try to stick to the facts where possible, but that's not always easy. Blah, 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 blah. With that out of the way, let's get into it. And I'd like to thank my new patrons here at the beginning. Bilingual USA, Cami Davis, and E-I-I-E-E-M-E, -E -E, which I won't even try to pronounce. I appreciate you all, as well as uh, Antaiga, Kendra Tolliver, Dane... Uh, Real Folk Blues and Jiris and Dan Riley and Ken, all some of my newer patrons as well. So, welcome to the show. And as I said, I'm going to be talking about South Park today. However, I want to make sure that people know ahead of time that this topic, even though it's controversial, the various topics that they cover, um, I'm very open-minded on both sides of most of these topics that I understand why things are controversial, that I don't just jump to one side or the other because I realize when a lot of people feel a certain way, then you have to respect that. And when I was looking at season one, for example, here, I remembered that season one, episode one in 1997 was uh, Cartman Gets an Anal Probe. And it's about Cartman in the show who the aliens give him an anal probe and nobody believes him. There's something going on inside him. And in the end, it's pretty, it's pretty absurd. And the whole first season was pretty absurd. But there is one big, big, big gay owls, gay boat ride, um, which was kind of addressing uh, the gay culture back then. Uh, then there was Starvin' Marvin, which dealt with uh, the African uh, crisis as far as uh, areas where kids are starving and how it's used as an exploitation. And a lot of these supposed charities use it to exploit money and people. Um, it, the list goes on. And then, of course, there's the absurd final 
final episode of the first season, which is called Cartman's Mom is a Dirty Slut. Now I'm reciting these uh, titles for you so you can get an idea of, if you don't watch South Park, how I can understand if you watch the first season, you could be instantly turned off and never watch it again. When my wife and I got together in 1998, she didn't like South Park. Like a lot of women didn't like South Park. Um, it was a pretty dirty show. But as the years went on and she watched more episodes, I mean, she actually told me yesterday she wanted to subscribe to HBO Max just to get South Park because they removed it from Hulu. We love that show because it's addressed so many issues. Some of the examples of the more controversial topics that one of my favorite ones that I even made a remix about, I made a whole song using the clips from it, uh, kind of DJ style years ago, and I did upload it. I'll share it. It's called It Hits the Fan, and the whole episode was about the word shit, and they said it however many times, and they would count every time they said shit. It was like a hundred times or more, but the point was not to say shit in the show. It was the point that they were making is that at that time, a lot of TV stations and broadcasters had started using the word shit in some of the shows, and it was this huge controversial topic with, you know, uh, the viewership. And um, they really poke fun at society. Some of the ones are so absurd, like Lemmy Winks is one about a hamster that's roaming somebody's bowels, and that could instantly make a person say, these guys are disgusting. But they addressed Mormons, they addressed Scientology, uh, they addressed uh, the Catholic Church, uh, and Native Americans, and all these different issues that were important in a comedic way, but made the point if you're paying attention. The one that was called Trapped in a Closet was, a, was about Tom Cruise and, uh, you know, not coming out of the closet. But in the show, he literally wouldn't come out of, like, Stan's closet. And the way they do it is artistic. It's artistic to the max. I mean, it's amazing the way that they do this. And um, they have a friend named Timmy who's in a wheelchair and he has a mental issue. And uh, they did one about O.J. Simpson. They've talked about the Jews. One of the most controversial topics and episodes ever was the the one with Biggie Smalls, I believe. I think it was called Apologies to Jesse Jackson. In this episode, Stan was up on stage playing Wheel of Fortune, and it was the, the description was people who annoy you. And it said N blank G G E R S. You see what I'm getting at? And he blurted out the N word and everybody just oh, gasped and cringed. And then the lady walks over Vanna and slowly turns the letter around. It was naggers. And the guy's like, no, oh, he goes, oh, naggers. And he was so sure he had the word right. And it was such a well done episode because it really made the point. It was all about intention in his mind. There was nothing wrong. Well, I didn't mean anything by it, but it obviously was a huge issue at the time, and it still is today, you know. But them making a whole show about that word, you know, it, it, it. Uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker are geniuses. I mean, they are around fifty now. They are. Uh, they, I remember they they were quoted as saying they don't want to be doing this shit when they're sixty, and they might not be making them very much longer, but. Um, Everything turned around, and this is where I'm getting to the point of the real discussion here. They talked about a lot of weird topics that were, had been going on through the in, in late 90s and the early 2000s to the mid-2000s. And then something changed. The new episodes that came out contained a new principle, because the old principle had taken off. She had been, I think... I think she got fired or no she was killed I don't even recall I think she might have died but uh, all of a sudden they had this new principle called PC principle and PC principle did not allow any bullshit he was this this cool guy mr. blonde hair combed back with shades on everywhere he went he would not tolerate any type of bullying any type of abuse or bad language or any type of discriminatory language and the entire season was based around this PC principle and his hardcore 
basically abuse of people who he thought were abusing other people. It brought out the hypocrisy in the, quote, woke movement, if you want to call something that, and I'm no offense to anyone, because it's just terminology here. Um, but the idea that, you know, that you can force people not to use certain language by threatening them. Um, and it's actually fairly common. You see it in the internet space everywhere. Even if it's not a threat of physical violence, it could be what we call the canceling of people. And uh, I'm fortunate to not give a shit to where I never want to feel like I'm in a position where I can't speak my mind or else I'll be, quote, canceled. And uh, to a lot of these people who have already had fame and already been in a position of power, like comedians, for example, all of a sudden they have to change everything that they say because the things they used to say are not acceptable anymore. A good example would be like George Carlin, who people still love and laugh at, but today it would be unacceptable, right? In most circles, so is Dave Chappelle, but my wife and I both watched the Chappelle special the other day and cracked up at it because it's about intention. It's not about what you say. So to back up to the PC principle thing here, this went on to an episode where the one of the teachers left and became president and uh, he brought on his his partner in, in crime which was actually uh, Jenner Kylie Caitlyn Jenner and uh, it, they did not do any justice to the stunning and brave <laughs> quote here and I want to say a lot of people could take it extremely offensive but I understood what they were trying to do there because that morphed into an episode that was called strong woman Strong Woman was about a female weightlifting competition where this woman was being, say, interviewed by the, the newscaster, like, well, how do you feel about competing with a transgender woman? And she's like, well, what's wrong with that? More power to her. Then he's like, well, have you met her? And the, the transgender woman's name is Heather, and she walks up on stage, and she's like basically the epitome of a WWF wrestler based on a WWF wrestler, a specific one, and uh, just super buff, somebody who said that they decided they were going to transition two weeks ago, rippling muscles, and of course won the competition, and all the women were upset about it, but they couldn't say anything, because they weren't allowed to say anything bad about this, because it might be offensive or discriminatory towards the transgender. Even though women have fought for so long to even compete in a lot of these things because it's always been a men's sport or whatnot, then along come men who have transitioned into women to go into these sports. So if anyone talks about this topic, they're instantly labeled as some sort of a hater, they're canceled. South Park nailed it, and they covered it really well. And they're able to do this, which is why all of the topics they talk about are the ones that need to be talked about more. And I think that's why they're able to pull three or four stories and put them into one in a 25-minute episode. It's really amazing. And um, most, most, <laughs> most recently, South Park came out with the pandemic special. Now, this came out last year, I believe in like September or October of 2020. And then a second part two came out this year in like February or March. Now, the funny thing is that I really wanted to see them, but they weren't available on any platforms I had. They're now available on South Park Studios. You can actually go watch that on their thing. So I didn't realize this. Uh, I watched them both last night. And uh, they were funny, of course, but uh, there was a huge component missing, of course, that something that tra you know Matt and Trey said a couple of years ago, uh, they said basically reality in our society has become so absurd that they don't even know how to make a joke because reality is so much more hilarious and ridiculous than anything they can come up with. And I totally sympathize with that. It's like we're at a point where things are so absurd right now that I don't even know what's funny anymore or what's ridiculous anymore because everything seems ridiculous. So all the issues that they tackle in that about masks lockdowns vax they're early on and i'm sure that they'll make another one i hope hopefully about the craziness that is going on now but um they deal with these 
few issues that I wanted to point out that are important to us. Looks. Race. Religion. Bullies. Death. Mental illness. Family. Sexuality. Censorship. Content and copyright. I mean, their, their Star Wars and Disney episodes are perfect. Uh, and even love and self-help and help for others. Because they don't just deal with the controversial topics for controversy. There is an underlying message. The BL you can be kind of, you know, moral the story from G.I. Joe, right? Um, the more you know kind of shit. Well, it's in there if you're listening. And uh, I think of all the epic things that South Park has done, uh, one that might stick out in a lot of people's minds is the giant douche and turd sandwich controversy. Now, this started back in the days, I believe, the first time they did this was back when, like, the Bush and Obama era, like, way back when, in the early 2000s, and they did an episode where everybody had to choose and vote for a school mascot, and the choice the choices were between a giant douche, which was represented by a guy in an actual douche costume running around, or a turd sandwich was a literal costume of a guy in a sandwich with, with shit in it. And you can see the metaphors here. Your choices suck. And the kids that stood behind their douche or their turd sandwich were very adamant about it. And the ones who didn't said, what are you guys doing? They both suck. And I definitely fall within that camp. I have felt that way about most candidates, and I understand it. And a lot of shows won't touch politics that way. But the funny thing is that they do it laughing at both teams, if you want to call them that. And so, here's the show South Park, which 25 years ago was utterly despised, which had been attempted to be canceled several times, which had been moved to other platforms, and eventually now it's revered and respected. 25 years. You think about that for a minute. There was an episode they did about the homeless in California, and it was... Uh, new given yeah what was it moving all the homeless they did it based on an old rap song and it was about them sending busloads of homeless people to other cities and you look into it and it's exactly what they were doing at that time these are topics that a lot of the times the media is not even covering and so people don't even realize what's really happening trying to clean up our spaces by sending people to other cities meanwhile it just continues to get worse and worse for places like California, which is kind of the laughing stock, I guess, of the, the country. But even though California was a huge, it hasn't always been this way. They've been, they were like the fifth largest economy or something, and one of the largest producers, if not the largest producer of agriculture in the country for a long time. But things are changing. Now they have the second highest poverty rate, number three in, in lack of jobs. Um, their housing is horrible. Their crime rates are horrible. Their COVID laws and their regulations have just become ludicrous. And they put Proposition, what, 65 cancer warnings on everything. I mean, you'll see this may contain things that cause cancer. This is where it all started like years ago. Things like this where California has always been overprotective and overprogressive. And I'm not knocking because I supported that for a long time. I really did. And then I started seeing people who were liberals like myself who were pointing out these flaws and going, God, look at these people. They're taking things too far. They're, be, they're wanting to bubble wrap society. And I thought, you know, this is actually true. I see this. And it was within the last five years that I really uh, realized it's, you know, even shameful to call yourself a liberal or a conservative in today's atmosphere because it really means nothing. Um... And a lot of the shows like South Park address this from a neutral standpoint. I think they do a really good job at it. But um, there have been so many failed programs in places like California that now everybody's moving out and everybody's complaining because those damn liberals. But really, it's a there's a bigger picture unfolding here. Um, there's certain things that everyone wants to talk about. And that's pointing out the failures in this or the failures and look at this state or look how messed up these people are. Look how mess messed up these people are. But there's certain things that are just completely unacceptable to talk about. 
as I mentioned, like trans in sports, or it's supposedly a non-issue, any conversation is shut down, even though the competitors themselves, or the women who are, say, competing against them, are the ones who are complaining, and they're told to shut up. And it's not just that. Uh, any team, anybody who is called out for inconsistencies in their thinking plays the victim card. And the victim card is used way too widely. People are not as victimized as they often claim to be. And to the point they don't realize others also can be victims. And then we have these groups that form that basically, for example, BLM. BLM is a movement. I, I agree with the fact that Black Lives Matter, but I don't agree with an organization that has millions of dollars in donations and funding that doesn't do shit with it. From what I last heard, it was their own communities that were complaining about, hey, where, what are you doing with this to fix the communities? What are you doing to help the people? No, because any organization that forms starts taking that money and using it for nefarious purposes or their own purposes. And I'm not saying they are specifically, but this is what we've seen over and over. I mean, goddamn, the Red Cross has been caught wasting and bullshitting and diverting funds. Goodwill pays their top CEO like, you know, a couple million a year or something. I was reading a thing about how Goodwill does not even consider themselves a charity. But it's the illusion of the charity and the illusion that there are groups of people who organ self-organize and really um, give a shit about your best interests. Sometimes there are individuals within these groups that give a shit. But as a whole, groups tend to abuse their power. And this is something South Park has consistently pointed out, that any time a group of people get together and think they're doing the right thing for the right reasons and they're being righteous, they end up being the problem. It's a fascinating thing to see. I think it's really important that we're able to change our minds often. And when new information comes in, that we're able to adjust accordingly. You know... And think for ourselves, especially, and speak honestly with good intentions. It seems like a very simple concept, but for some reason it seems extremely difficult for people to just be honest. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people's honesty is different than mine. But anyhow, that's all I've got for today. I'd like to go deeper into some of these topics, and, and but really just wanted to cover the South Park aspect. And I would urge anyone who, if you hate South Park... You, you have to watch every episode from the beginning to end. If you have watched every episode and you still hate South Park, then I don't understand and I'd love to have a discussion about that. The topics are very important, but they're not for everyone. <laughs> not every episode and every season has some deep meaning, but most of the newer ones really are pretty well thought out. Um, it's losing its edge because everything does, but the point is it was there for us during this crazy transition into a time where people are literally canceled from the internet for saying the wrong thing that they don't even mean, where those of us who feel like we're caught in the middle um, just can't understand where we're going with this, but also understand that we're really digging our own grave by trying to, I guess, change how people think. It has to be done. You catch more flies with honey? Ain't that how that goes? At any rate, go through the rest of my 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 patrons here. I want to say thank you to all of you. Um, I'm going to read through the list here. We got Bilingual USA. We got Emi. We got Cami Davis. Antiga. Kendra Tolliver. Dane. Real Folk Blues. Jiris or Jiris. Uh, Dan Riley, Ken, Conrad, Deedster, Speciosa, Jordan, Owen, Trisha, Wellbeing, Charles, Sean, Violetta, Stephen, Ryan L., Pierre Brew, Josh O'Brien, Robin W., Zelda Zonk, Tim Smith, River Milliken, Adam Manzinson, <laughs> Matthew Langheim, Matt Hemingway, Jake Dugan, MJ Pritchett, Sean Fitzpatrick, okay, uh, Bill Hunt, Highway Child, Seam Bob McBroderick, Rob Franzen, Chris Morales, Elgira Desvalis, Brianna Rotten, Jake Alberg, Alexander Walpole, Russell E. Mom, Pia Ewings, Riku Ilvenen, Hillen Moon, Mumps, John Peterson, Joshua Nicholson, Don Starnes, Deborah Chan, and William Hall. Thank you all, and thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. And um, 
to read my little final outro here. Thanks for listening. This podcast is free for everyone to download and listen to. I don't have any ads or paywalls. It's fully supported by donations through Patreon or PayPal. Patrons have access to the video versions of many podcasts, as well as various blogs and writings I share. To visit, go to patreon.com slash carpo719. I do all of my own research, writing, editing, and producing, so it takes a bit of time, but I try to upload a new episode each week. I appreciate all of your contributions to my efforts, both financially as well as the wonderful comments people leave. For more information or to join the discussion, visit my Discord server on Carpo719. I don't have a Facebook or Instagram as I feel it takes up too much time, but I am eternally grateful for a platform to share with you all, so thanks for coming along. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and I'll talk to you all next time. Peace out. Thanks for coming to Carbo's channel, yo. Yeah.